Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Today's second reading is from the book of John, the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have life in his name. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is, it, it is clear it was the day of the resurrection. Actually, that evening, rumors were flying. Mary Magdalene in the early morning had gone to the tomb where Joseph of Arimathea had laid Jesus' body three days before. She saw that the stone which sealed the tomb had been rolled away. Her first thought was that the body had been stolen. So she ran to Peter and the beloved disciple and told them. They both ran to the tomb to see for themselves. You know, these women, they don't always get things right. Well, sure enough, Jesus wasn't there. The narrator explains that the beloved disciple believed what he saw, but as yet none understood the significance of that empty tomb. What could they do? So they went home. Mary remained there weeping. Then Jesus appeared to Mary, and at first she didn't recognize him. But when Jesus called her name, she knew. Jesus told her, Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and to your God. Immediately, Mary did just as she was instructed. The disciples were now gathered behind closed, in fact, locked doors. They had spent their weekend grieving the end of what they had hoped would be the salvation of Israel. But the one they believed to be the Messiah, the one who was to lead them to freedom from Roman oppression, had been killed, hung on a cross 
as a criminal. Now that the Passover was over, they had to regroup. Do they go back to Galilee? Do they go back to their old jobs? What's next? It sure wasn't safe for them to stay there in Jerusalem. The same people who killed Jesus may come after them. So, with the missing body and with the danger to their lives, they gathered once more, not just the 10 closest followers. You see, of course, Judas wasn't there. And we're told later that Thomas was not there at that time. But there were probably other disciples, the women and other men who had been disciples of Jesus there as well. Together, they would seek some answers. When Jesus appeared in their midst, at first, certainly he was not expected, it seems he was not recognized. But when he showed his wounds, they knew, they recognized him, and they rejoiced. Before they had had time to ask their questions, Jesus greeted them a second time, offering them his peace and giving them their marching orders. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Breathing into them the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now next, the evangelist gives us an example of Jesus' mission that he is now passing on to his disciples. Thomas, where he was that first night, the where was he? Where was Thomas that first night that the rumors were flying of Jesus? Had he given up when Jesus died? Had he turned his back on others? Or was he so despondent, so depressed, so lost, at Jesus' death, that he just couldn't be with anyone. Well, the other disciples told him of seeing Jesus, and Thomas was, like Peter and the beloved disciple and the others who did not believe Mary, or at first even their own eyes when Jesus did appear to them, Thomas was disbelieving, but he was also honest. Thomas admitted openly that he would not believe unless he saw for himself, and not just saw, but put his finger into the wounds of Jesus' hands and hand into his wounded side. Now gathered again this next Sunday evening, still behind closed doors, this time Thomas was present, and Jesus appeared again. Loving his own to the end, Jesus offered his hands and his side to Thomas. Not just to see, but to touch as Thomas had demanded. Suddenly, touch wasn't necessary to Thomas. Thomas knew who it was that stood before him. My Lord and my God, he confessed. What did it take? Seeing, maybe, feeling, perhaps it was, but not physical. Feeling Jesus' love, feeling Jesus' forgiveness. Thomas knew whom it was standing before him, touching him within, moving him to belief, opening Thomas to the desire of faith, that was waiting, but Thomas would not let it loose until he saw Jesus and was forgiven. Then Jesus did an amazing thing. Jesus, after filling the disciples and Thomas with the power of the Holy Spirit in their belief, Jesus blessed all of us, all of us who would come into belief through the work of Jesus says disciples in Jesus' name. 
Last Sunday, I, still avoiding large crowds because my COVID vaccination wasn't deemed fully complete until this past Friday, I celebrated Easter with the National Cathedral. Bishop Marianne Buddy began her sermon explaining to listeners that for the church, there is not just one Sunday of Easter, but six, explaining, and I quote, resurrection is a process, not an event, end quote. Belief is not an instantaneous event. It is a process. Jesus is present to us even when we don't believe. We are, have been introduced to Jesus in different ways and at different times. Some of us come to know of Jesus through our parents or at church and in Sunday school. Some may hear from friends the stories of this holy man and be brought to meet him. My dear friend and former professor, the Reverend Howard Hanchy, tells of an unchurched family, family in crisis who sought help by chance through an inner urging to prayer in a church which had been passed by by this person many times before. In seeking, they found help with their crisis. But even more in this process, they met Christ in that church and the people they met through that church. And faith grew in a previously unfamiliar God. Well, we all, like Thomas and all the other disciples, have our doubts about the mystery of resurrection. And yet, as we grow and look back, we can see and recognize those times that we thought we could never get through. Those times can be big or small. For me, one was my dad's death, another a difficult ending to my daughter's marriage. Yes, and even for me, retirement. It was just plain, sometimes just plain hard days where everything seems to go wrong. And we ask, has God abandoned us? Is there a God? We do get through these times and we are able to look back and see a power that is beyond us at work for us and in us and through other people for us a power of forgiveness, a power of love, a power of grace that keeps us going to the other side where we find new life, resurrection. And we find the hope for new and better things in the life that is ahead. This is resurrection just like coming into spring after the death of winter, just like beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel of a year-long pandemic. We have to open our eyes, the eyes of our hearts to see. We open ourselves, our souls and bodies to receive. And we open our hands and use our feet and our words to give back to God by giving to others what Jesus has given to us. When we forgive, we are freed. And when we retain the sins of others, they and we remain bound. It is believed that Thomas, whose doubts were forgiven, went on to plant seeds of faith to the east in India, where he was later martyred. But he had an impact on many, and those have already been blessed by Jesus in their belief. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join with me in the prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Remembering Gemma and Carol Wiley, Richard Clark, Ray Rogers, Winifred Delano, Aileen Robinson, Lois Hett, Donald Freund, Mike and Ellie Roberts, Paul Carey, Linda Booth, Judy Jett, Kathy Mankey, Katie Cole, and Michael DeGroot. Remembering also those who are suffering from COVID and those who grieve the loss of loved ones, especially the Neal family and those others that we name in the silence of our hearts. Give the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. And now a collect for the search for our new priest in charge. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this family of St. Mary's and for this time of transition and for the opportunities that lie ahead of us. Help us, O oh God, to trust in your wisdom and direction and teach us to recognize the sound of your voice as we take time to listen for your leading. Pour upon us as a discernment group and a church family an abundance of your Holy Spirit, 
that with clear minds and open hearts, we, trusting not in our own understanding, recognize the ways we will grow in faith, unity, and love as we trust you in this process. We pray also for the person whom we will call to be our next priest in charge. Protect and guide your servant as we find our way to each other. Amen. Let us say as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now an Easter blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
A crown of thorns placed on his head He knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? He hung his head and prepared to die Then lifted his face up to the sky Said, I am coming home now, Father, to you A reed which held his final sip Was gently lifted to his lips He drank his last and gave The soldier who had used his sword to pierce the body of our Lord said truly this was Jesus Christ our Savior. He looked with fear upon his sword then turned to face his Christ and Lord fell to his knees crying Took from his head the thorny crown And wrapped him in a linen gown Then laid him down to rest inside the tomb The holes in his hands, his feet inside Now in our hearts we know he Three days went by, again they came To move the stone, to bless the slain With oil